Hello and welcome to another Monday. Uh, hopefully, hopefully your Monday's gone well, and uh, hopefully you had a great weekend. Uh, we have a wonderful show. Uh, we're going to be pretty simple and straightforward this evening. You know, I thought about the whole concept of detoxification. Uh, I've been discussing that with a number of patients lately, and you know, despite the fact that you know we talk about this concept a lot, the whole concept of detox. Um, I still find a lot of people don't grasp the, the essence of what it means to detox. Um, what is the, the process of detox? What does it mean? Oftentimes individuals think that they have to go and buy substances or chemicals or special herbs or whatever the case may be. Uh, but really those things aren't necessary. Detox is very simple and straightforward. In fact, oftentimes <clears throat> I'll talk to my patients and I'll say, well, you know, look, you know, when are you ready to detox as well? You know, I need more money. Uh, I can't afford to buy this, that, or the other. Well, I mean, it's much simpler than that. In fact, detoxification really costs you less money from the standpoint of, of uh, currency or banknotes or whatever the case is. Uh, what it does cost you time and attention and focus and effort. And so we're going to talk about some of those things. Uh, I'll be joined this evening with um, my friend and colleague, uh, Chef Babette, and she's going to, I'm going to share some of the scientific aspects of what it means to detox, uh, what it does to your body, some of the evidence we've had. Uh, we'll share some information with you uh, in terms of um, uh, how to get started. So we'll help you out with that. And, and Chef Babette's going to come on and give some practical tips. Uh, this is the first Monday of the month, and this is Inspiration uh, Monday. And so Chef Abed's going to come and, and join me in this discussion on detox. What does it mean to detox? How does it work? So sit back, get comfortable, get your pen and paper ready uh, and get ready for some insight on nutritional detox. Okay, so welcome back. As I said, we're going to get into this whole concept of detox. I'm going to share a couple of uh, slides with you. Uh, and um, it has some graphics here, which I hope will help, you know, break things down. So again, you know, you don't have to, you know, write everything down. Obviously, this is recorded. You can go back to the recording. You can do screenshots of these slides. But what I want you to do is sit back and just sort of think through the concepts. Obviously, uh, for any and all questions you have, uh, please raise them in the chat room. You guys ask some of the most challenging questions. Hello, Deborah Payne. Hello, Kirks. Um, hello, Catherine Welch, Barbara Perlis, Bradley Thomas. Hello, how are you doing this evening? So again, detox, what does it mean? How does it work? And um, you know, what's the process? So I'm gonna share with you the, the meaning of detox. Let's just break it down from its, its word itself. So you know, detox, we throw that term around. It's the abbreviation for detoxification. Um, in essence, detoxification is a process of what? Removing toxins. D, remove away from toxins. So toxins are removed from the body. Uh, so it's a normal process. In fact, your body detoxes all the time. So if detox equal removing of toxins, you know, what is the process by which that's done? Um, you know, we don't necessarily have to add things to our body to detox because our body is designed to remove toxins. It's designed actually to clean itself out. So detox for the body is removing toxins from the body. So detox, when we talk about it from the health, wellness, or clinical standpoint, is simply a process where we facilitate the removal of toxins uh, from the body. So first and foremost, where do toxins come from? Um, well, we get free radicals, the major forms of toxins. Um, free radicals are unstable molecules. So, you know, you may have some form of radiation that, 
you know, hits a chemical molecule and makes it unstable. So you can have a free radical that way. But, you know, free radicals are formed by other forms too, the other chemicals that we may ingest, uh, you know, but these free radicals, however they get into our system, they move around and, and they're unstable molecules. So they move around erratically. They uh, move around at the subcellular level. So that cause chemical reactions that are abnormal. So they can cause um, um, damage to cells. Um, they may originate from a polluted environment. Uh, if you're a smoker, for instance, or you are living next to a smoker, uh, you may ingest toxins or chemicals that then may cause free radical formations. A poor diet, of course. And the poor diet, I probably should have that highlighted in bold face because that's probably the most efficient way that we bring in toxins to cause free radicals. We do a lot of other things. Uh, it's been estimated only about 20% of the population smoke, but a very large percent of the population consume foods that are processed, chemicalized, uh, with lots of saturated fat. So poor diet probably leads the, the list, maybe close behind a prescription drugs or even over-the-counter drugs. So medications, which you know we prescribe them, I prescribe medications, they have uh, some benefit in relieving symptoms. Uh, they have some benefit if you, you're you know having, uh, say, an acute event, maybe a heart event, heart attack, or your blood pressure very high. We may prescribe a medication that has a benefit but you know you probably shouldn't try to rely on being on those medications indefinitely. You try to need to do something to remove your dependency on prescription drugs because they all have adverse effects or at least potential adverse effects. Recreational habits we alluded to: cigarette smoking, alcohol consumption. Alcohol is a toxin to the liver. They're also a direct toxin to the heart. Illicit drugs are also very toxic, and of course, emotional trauma. Uh, that's, you know, lots of stresses, life events, uh, all of these things can have an impact uh, on you physiologically and biochemically, and they can cause toxins to form and toxins in the form of free radicals or other uh, processes. This is just a, a diagram to show you uh, what, how free radicals can work. So free radicals equal toxins. So you have an apple here, and the apple goes through what we call an oxidative process. Uh, and so basically the stress on the apple breaks the cells down and the apple progresses and prematures. Now we may have seen an apple, you bite into an apple, set it on the counter, it'll start to turn brown, you let it sit there even longer. Uh, it may turn even darker and start to shrivel up, etc. This is an oxidative process, free radical formation. It's analogous to what can happen at the cellular level. Here you see a normal cell, and then it gets attacked by free radicals that destroy the cell membrane. The cell starts to crumble, and eventually the cell is destroyed by what we call as oxidative stress. So excessive number of free radicals in excess of, of uh, antioxidants uh, causes what we call oxidative stress, and it causes cells, tissue, and organs to break down. Uh, when we look at these things clinically, we see them in the form of diabetes or high blood pressure or arthritis or heart failure, all of these conditions that result in um, cell breakdown uh, and the like. So toxins equal inflammation. Um, inflammation is analogous to a biochemical uh, fire. So you have one aspect of toxin buildup is free radicals. These are unstable molecules or, or poisons. You have another aspect of uh, um, toxin uh, buildup, which is inflammation, which is sort of like a biochemical fire. This results in uh, breakdown of cells and organs. So the inflammation is a biochemical fire. Chronic inflammation is a slow kindling fire. This results in chronic illness, as I alluded to, heart failure, kidney disease, high blood pressure. People walk around with these chronic illnesses, and it's sort of like having a slow kindling fire that's destroying their body slowly and progressively. And then an acute inflammatory flare is when, so you may have a heart attack. So somebody may have heart disease and they have uh, inflammation in the arteries, but something sets it off to where you have an acute event. And so the, the inflammation uh, revs up and you have an acute inflammatory flare. 
how to remove free radicals. Basically, you take in antioxidants. There's a leafy green vegetables. Uh, these things donate electrons to free radicals, and it helps stabilize these molecules. So in summary, detox, when you help the body remove these toxins by either putting in nutrition, but the first part of detoxification is to remove the toxic input. So when people talk about detoxification, it has more to do with what you remove from your nutritional state or remove your state. So for instance, you know, if you detox from smoking, you stop smoking. You detox from alcohol consumption, you stop drinking alcohol. You detox from, you know, uh, fried chicken, you stop um, uh, eating uh, fried chicken, et cetera, et cetera. So the detoxification process, first and foremost, has to do with what you remove from your system, not with what you consume and, and bring into the system. And so that's an important concept that you know I want us to take away. So when people say, well, I can't afford to detox, you know, they're thinking about buying this herb or that herb or this whatever. But first and foremost, the foundation of detoxification has to do with removing uh, things from your diet. But we'll get into some of the other aspects of you know what what the costly aspects of things uh, is and why it may 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 work. Let me share a few slides on um, what we found in terms of detoxification. Then I'm going to uh, address some of the comments uh, that you made, and then we're going to see if Chef Babette can come back in. Uh, first of all, we saw detox uh, for heart failure. Uh, and this is some data when we put patients on a detox, when the heart ejection fraction, that's the uh, strength of the heart, uh, percentage of blood that it squeezes out with each contraction. Uh, we had a series of patients, three that had about 20% and it went up to about 44%. So the hearts uh, started working more effectively when it started detoxing. The heart thickness, you know, people have an enlarged heart an enlarged heart is not necessarily a good thing. It can be too thick because of excess blood pressure, excess inflammation. So it can be large and swollen. And so we saw when we, and we can measure LV mass on cardiac MRI when we put a series of three patients on a detox, the, the enlargement of the heart uh, subsided or regressed. Whoops. And so stroke fall, and that's the amount of blood that the heart ejects with each uh, contraction, that improves significantly. Uh, with a nutritional detox and the cardiac output, which is the total body circulation, uh, again, that improved with uh, nutritional detox. So nutritional detox, we found uh, clinical evidence that it can improve cardiac function. Uh, here's a patient here who had a 95% narrowing of a proximal artery uh, that went away after a nutritional detox. She did not have a stent. Uh, her heart got stronger, her symptoms subsided. Uh, again, the power of detoxification, the body tends to heal itself. This is a busy slide. I'm not going to overwhelm you with these numbers, but I do want to show you, of course, here's the top line here with weight. Uh, weight goes down very significantly in four weeks with detoxification. And these are statistically significant changes really from week to week. Okay. And so <clears throat> as you see B, uh, if it has a B by it, there's a significant uh, reduction in weight from the previous week. And we saw a significantly, statistically significant drop in weight each week and the total uh, amount of weight reduction. So that's very uh, key. BMI was reduced. Uh, systolic blood pressure went down significantly over time. Um, diastolic blood pressure went down significantly over time. Uh, and similarly, heart rate uh, went down significantly over time. And so there are a lot of other things. And at the same time with detox, these parameters improve the prescription drugs, um, that we prescribe was reduced significantly. So the total medication went from 2.6 to 1.6 medications per person on average. And that was a significant drop, uh, and medications outside of blood pressure medication were reduced. So we saw that when we place a series of patients on a detox, they had significant improvement in weight, blood pressure, while at the same time reducing the medication requirement that they have. Uh, we saw also uh, triglycerides improve LDL cholesterol. So this is over in just a matter of uh, four weeks, hemoglobin A1C, C-reactive protein, uh, and so on. So 
detoxification is a process where you remove things from your system. Uh, there's steps that you can take to remove. We have a number of programs. Uh, for those of you interested, uh, you can go to our website. It's MontgomeryHeart.com, uh, how to get started. I'll put that in the um, the uh, sticker, and I'm going to try to get Chef Babette back on. She uh, had something to do, may have run an errand. But thanks for your attention. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick break here, and we're going to come back, and I'm going to open floor for your comments and questions and uh, suggestions uh, and the like. So just hang tight. Uh, when we come back for the next uh, segment uh, of the uh, of the show. Okay, welcome back. And we still don't have Chef Abet back yet. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at some of the comments you have. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please add them. Uh, now, <clears throat> Nancy Jenkins, well, I don't know how if you're taking new patients, just wanted to join physical and blood work. I'm in Houston, Texas. Uh, yes, Nancy, we are. Um, you can call us at, let me put that in the chat, but uh, call us at 713-599-1144. Um, and you can uh, get in touch with us there. You can also go to our website. Uh, and I'm going to put that in the chat. And I'm also going to put that in the uh, on the banner as well. So you can find us uh, online or also you can find us... Um, uh, on site, but thanks for that interest there. Um, uh, Hilda Najar likes the uh, apple analogy. Uh, you know, the apple analogy and analogies generally are very good. I use analogies to help individuals uh, in terms of um, uh, understanding things, understanding uh, concepts. Uh, that's how I understand concepts through analogies. And so I think it's something that can be very helpful uh, here's our website, MontgomeryHeart.com. I'll leave that up for some of you to, to uh, look at. And then uh, there's a link on the ticker. You go to MontgomeryHeart.com slash get started is a way you can get started. But, but here's what I want to do and break down the concept of detoxification with you. So let's say, for instance, you have some chronic illness and you're on a lot of medications um, and you, you know, you just don't feel right. You're not so sick that you have to be admitted to the hospital. You're not so sick that you have to, you know, you're having a heart attack or need some acute illness. I have some acute, uh, I need an acute intervention, but you just don't feel right. And you're taking maybe five medications or 10 medications. So what do you do? What are the simple steps? First of all, analyze your lifestyle. What we do with our patients, okay, what are you eating? Uh, what do you, you know, uh, how do you spend your time? Are you indoors most of the time? Are you outdoors? Do you get fresh air, sunshine, uh, all of these things? Are you hydrating yourself? So we try to get a basic assessment. And many people who are, are, are chronically ill, uh, many of them may be doing the worst of the worst. So I'm going to start with the, the most straightforward case, someone who's eating a lot of trash food. They're not getting out, getting fresh air. They're not exercising or moving about, and maybe they're just busy with work. They've got a stressful job or whatever the case is. And so everything's just kind of, you know, you know, messed up. So where do you start? What we typically do is we, we have the person analyze their diet. Now, if you're, you know, have poor exercise habits, that's contributing. If you got a stressful job, that's contributing. If you have, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, inability to, to walk or sleep well, that's contributing. But what we found that if you start with the nutrition, start with how you fuel your body, many of those other things, poor sleep, inability to exercise, um, uh, stress, you know, impact on your life, many of those things can be corrected by properly nourishing the body. And so when you properly nourish the body, what we see within a very short period of time, 
we start to see people sleep better. They have more energy. They're able to walk. If they have arthritis and they can't exercise, they can't walk, the arthritis uh, reduces. How long does it take? If you're detoxing properly, it takes probably a few days to a week and a half before you start to feel better. The first few days, you may have detox reactions. Day seven or eight is when you start to feel much better. Uh, we see patients, we typically follow them back on the detox after uh, week one, and they come back and they're sleeping better. Uh, their aches and pains are down and so on and so forth. And we're able to reduce medications within the first week. So what is it that you have to do? First and foremost, I want people to know that it's not a matter of taking some special herbs. We don't have special herbs or chemicals. Yeah, we use supplements. We use a number of things. But the foundation of what we do is we remove every ounce of toxic food from the diet. So what is that? Uh, all forms of processed sugars, processed carbohydrates, all forms of animal protein. We move, remove chicken and fish and all of those things. We remove uh, foods, vegetables that are you know, overly cooked. So we put people on a raw plant-based diet. Why do we use a raw plant-based diet? Because it eliminates the possibility of having certain foods uh, in a toxic form uh, that, um, that uh, may come in. So for instance, if you're like on a plant-based diet uh, and it's not clear, you may microwave something. Well, microwaving food may have an adverse effect on the chemical composition of the food. And when you consume it, it's gonna have an adverse effect on you. So we completely strip the diet of all forms of food that are that are animal protein, that are processed in any form. So you do raw fruits and vegetables. Now, there's some level of processing. What are those level of processing? Well, you can mix it in a blender. You can juice it, okay? Um, we let you maybe warm it up to 120 degrees to a certain extent. So there's some things that we allow you to do to the plant foods that help maintain its integrity and maintain the detoxification uh, process. But the simplest aspect of detoxification is to totally remove all of those other things and whatever's left is what you eat. So if you're just eating some apples and lettuce and carrot sticks and all of that stuff, that's perfectly fine. And that's an excellent detox. You just get a nice variety of raw plant foods. You may have some berries, some kale and spinach and quinoa. You can eat all of that in the raw natural state. You can chop it up, chew it up, etc. Now. What the problem with that is that people get bored with that. And so, you know, if you go from, you know, pizza, and chicken wings, fried chicken or whatever you're eating to just lettuce and apples, yeah, you might be able to do that for 24 hours or two days or a week. But after that, you can say, look, I'm tired of this. I need some variety. That's where a special program and a supervision comes into play. We help you learn how to manipulate your food, make interesting salad dressing. So the detoxification process in and of itself, in its purest form, is very inexpensive. You know, a patient comes and says, well, I don't have the time and money to detox. How much does it cost to not eat bad food? Zero dollars. The cost comes in when you're trying to replace your desire for certain foods with healthy foods, and you're trying to replicate those tastes and textures. That's when we have to get into gourmet raw foods, and that's where our program can help uh, in terms of detoxification. But a lot of these things you can do very simply uh, on your own, and that can make out uh, make a, a big difference in terms of how you do overall. So the, as the basic aspect of detoxification has less to do with herbs and supplements you take in. Yes, these can be a part of an overall detox program, but the foundation is to remove the toxin, remove the bad things. You will get a lot of benefit out of that process and that process alone. Now, uh, Bradley Thomas, uh, have you found a detox such as, such as juice feasting to be helpful for people on dialysis to lose weight for transplant? That's a great question. We have a, a fair amount of experience with juice feasting. We've used juice feasting before. In fact, sometimes the first detox will put a patient on juice feast for a lot of reasons. Now, you may hear people talk about cold pressed juices being unhealthy with all the sugars and so on. Um, first and foremost, you know, you want to get quality juices, you know, cold press juices. Uh, there are a lot of juice bars that, that does a good job of cold pressing juicing. 
Make sure you don't get some of the juice they have when they add sugars and things to it. Just get a cold pressed juice where root vegetables and greens and, and that type of thing and juice. Uh, and you're going to be in pretty good shape. Um, we've had patients do juice feeds for 30, 40 days. Uh, I've juice feed some patients on uh, dialysis. Uh, there's one patient I always talk about who comes to mind. He was on dialysis and he was on a 900 um, milliliter uh, fluid restriction and uh, per day. And so uh, when we put him on the juice fees, he just drank 900 milliliters of cold pressed juice instead of water. And before I started the juice fees, he had symptoms. He's always thirsty. He's always dehydrated. He's so dry, his tongue stuck to the roof of his mouth. Uh, and so he just didn't feel right. So he ended up, you know, just tolerating that. And so when he got on the juice fees, now he only did it for 14 days. I wanted him to go longer, but he just decided he wanted to do it 14 days. But almost immediately, he noticed that he was better hydrated. You know, his tongue wasn't so dry in the morning, wasn't sticking to the roof of the mouth. And, and he felt so much better. Uh, when you detox, you do lose weight. So if your body needs to reduce weight, it's going to do it naturally. If you don't need to lose weight, you probably won't lose too much. If you lose some, you gain it back or get, get back to what your ideal weight is. So we typically don't worry about weight loss because, as you saw in our data, these people went on as an aggressive a juice uh, feast as um, – uh, aggressive detox is a juice feast. Uh, they did whole foods, but um, juice feasting is a great way to detox. And I think if you're on doubt, of course, let your doctor know and all that. Uh, but we we have experienced juice feasting patients with uh, on dialysis, uh, and they've done fine under our supervision. Um, Kurt's uh, talked about watermelon. Since watermelon is 90%, 97% water, can we just eat eat it for the juicing? The answer is yes. You know, eating whole foods, uh, and most plant foods are, say, we're 80 to 90 percent, especially the leafy greens and, of course, the, the hydrating fruits. Many of those uh, are very high in water content, you know, 80, 70, 80, 90 percent water. And so, you know, yes, eating a watermelon uh, is, um, is um, hello, Barber from New, New Jersey. Uh, eating watermelon is a way to hydrate. In fact, um, what you can do is hydrate yourself by eating lots of hydrating foods. What are hydrating foods? Well, watermelon's one, um, cantaloupe is one, cucumber, uh, leafy greens, well, the stalks. These things are the high percentage water foods. So if you're consuming primarily a raw diet, you will be eating your water and the water content from a, a plant derived water is going to be uh, better for you than an inorganic form. Just getting it from a water bottle that's probably in the plastic has been sitting in heat for a long period of time. So if you're eating a lot of foods that's hydrating, it's going to hydrate you and it's going to allow you to uh, hydrate and nourish your body uh, in the way that you should. So so we have our star today. Shepard Bat is back with us. And uh, I'm going to bring her into the studio. Chef Babette, how are you today? Star of the day, y'all. <laughs> Chef Babette had a busy day today, I'm sure. And thanks for dropping. So, so Chef, I've just been sharing with our, our audience that, you know, detox has to do with what you remove from your system, not so much taking in herbs and chemicals or the like. Uh, and, and, um, Share with our, our team what your experience is and, and, and what when you think of when you go through a detox, what it is that you do and what's some of your secrets? You know, I don't I learned early on um, that it's so very important for us to cleanse the inside. And I learned that cleanse was pretty much um, removal was getting rid of. And so the best way that I learned to do that was through abstinence and removal. Um, so I started off cleansing doing, uh, let's see, doing the master cleanse. I think that's how, I, I think that was one of my very first cleanses, the master cleanse. Um, but before that, of course, you know, I had been turned on to Dr. Goss 
and uh, New Body products. You're familiar feel familiar with Dr. Goss, right? Doc? Yes, I've heard the name. I've never met him. Well, um, I was uh, he he was a an iridologist and an herbalist here mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. Well, he was located in Compton, and um, I got a reading, and he, I, he gave me. Um, I think I, I wound up taking five of his CKLS capsules, and they stand for colon, kidney, liver, and spleen. Yes. And I took five of those and drank eight ounces of cold-pressed olive oil and a uh, half cup of lemon juice and um, went to bed and woke up very early the next morning and I had began purging gallstones. Um, mm. I, I, I mean, all day long, toilet, school of these things, they're all different color green, from mm. emerald green to pea green all day until mm. I had to go to work, at, be at work around 4.30 or so in the afternoon. Wow. And I was passing gallstones all day long. And shortly after that, I went, I did the master cleanse for the first time. It was unbelievable to me because I couldn't believe that it opened up. It got so rid of so much of the inflammation. I began to, cause I was the person that always had the Kleenex. I was all, always, 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 always had the runny nose. Yep. And, um, I began to be able to smell everything, Doc. It just seemed like everything smelled like garlic because it it just totally clean. And it was almost after, I think the first time I did it, I may have done the 10 days as was suggested when I read the book. And um, it's almost like you don't want to start eating again um, because mm. you just never felt that way. I, I had never been that clean, you know what I mean? Um, and so um, I just got addicted, I think, after that. So for me, cleansing was to really, really, really abstain from eating. And I wasn't just going to cleanse for a few hours during the day. I needed to, to block out a few weeks, if you will, mm. of doing nothing but putting that which is going to help my body rid itself of all of the inflammation. Because it's my understanding that most disease is caused by an overload of inflammation. And, you know, we can give it whatever names we want. We're dirty. Yeah. And, the big part, you know, I like the point you make about uh, the one week, uh, or at least several weeks, because oftentimes people will say, well, let me just give me do it a few days, et cetera. But, um, it's important to give yourself a prolonged period of time. And, and you know, we, we arbitrarily say 28 days or four weeks, but some people need longer and, 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 and so on. So even though we have an arbitrary four week time we use, but you at least need to do several weeks. And I like the fact that you made that point. Well, uh, I, I can remember, Doc, I can remember, I knew it was working because I can remember certain fingers that I have that are stiff. Uh, from mm -hmm. injuries or whatever, I'd go on that that fast, and and about the second week to into the fifteenth day, these fingers were moving. I felt no stiffness, no nothing. What is mm. that? What is that, Doc? I knew yep. exactly what that was. Well, inflammation leaving the body, but that's exactly. toxic. Yep, exactly. Yep, that's the clearance. And movement, mobility yep. again. Yep. And I hear that a lot with patients, and, and that was my personal experience as well. You know, uh, Ganesh uh, Arier, uh says, uh, is asked, is it normal to gain weight on a few days during detox, cleanse phase, especially for someone who has been following 100% level zero to three foods only? You know, it depends on where your body is. You can gain some weight. We've had some people who are really thin who pick up some weight. Uh, and we have some people who may pick up a few pounds before they lose weight. So we have seen that even though most people drop weight, uh, but it varies from person to person. That's been been our experience from the people we've seen. How about, have you seen uh, any of your uh, clients? Well, what, what I notice more than anything, most people do lose. However, um, 
if you give it enough time, I don't, I think as you are losing waste, you will see a reduction in pounds, I believe. But you you need to give the cleanse time. Yeah. Not not just the week, you know, I'm rushing through it seven days. Boom, I, I didn't lose 15 pounds. What happened? <laughs> I mean, you know, you didn't cleanse. Yeah, I mean, yeah. for me, and it's just me, I, I need more time than seven days. I feel like I'm cheating myself when I just do seven days. Yeah. It just it's like I'm gonna I've been working all year and I'm gonna take off and go to Jamaica, but I ain't got but four days. Yeah. Now the the seven days, uh, I agree with you. It's it's really you're going through a lot of detox reactions in those seven days. And so uh that's the rough part about it, is that the detox reactions are the problem. And and most people may be just coming out of detox reaction, then if you you're feeling bad for the first three days, maybe four days, and then two days later you're quitting. It's like, okay, you hadn't gotten the, the, the full-fledged benefits. And so I agree. I tend to tell people no less than 15 days, and we try to get them through a 30-day, 28, 30-day period uh, to at least get some realm. Plus you get a full effect. You, you, you get um, most people, four weeks, they get some benefits. Sometimes there's a subgroup of people that may need six weeks. But you know what happens i've had patients who will come in they'll detox and their cholesterol things go down then they go back well i'm eating plant-based set of my numbers they go back yeah. too quick with everything though that's right that's right that's exactly right and so so that's what really happens now Catherine Welch says i've heard people use a lot of salt or oil and cleanses how are these helpful in such large quantities when you're encouraged to minimize even abstain from oil and salt on a daily basis now so, I in the in the master cleanse to do the uh, salt water enema in the morning, but you're using uh, un un uh, un un iodized salt. You're mm -hmm. using un iodized sea salt, so that water is going right through you. Um, if if that's the salt that she may be mentioning, but that is a um, it's an enema salt water enema that you do in the mornings after you've cleansed mm -hmm. all day. In the master cleanse, I don't yeah. know. Doctor. Yeah, some people talk about these pink sauce that they'll soak in water and drink it. And you know, I tried that once, and my goodness, when that salt touched my tongue, I just couldn't tolerate it. And yeah, so, I couldn't do that. <laughs> that that's a tough one. Um, freedom uh, improper diet is cause of uh, peristaltic muscles of most people to quit working, and it will take six to nine months. That's according to Doctor Christopher. The peristaltic muscle she's talking about, the muscle in the GI tract that causes the, the body, the colon, and intestines to move things through. You know, I think I think that's a part of it. And people have poor gut motility. Uh, and yeah, will it take a lot of people six to nine months? It may take people longer than that. There are a lot of things that are happening, uh, not only in the GI tract, but other things. And so uh, what help happens with gut motility the microbiome is adversely affected. Uh, and so what, even though mo is, for most people, it's not practical to be on a detox for six to nine months straight the very first time they do it. So we try to jumpstart them, get them on it for 30 days, let them experience it, have them come back to a healthy plant-based diet with some cooked stuff, let them go through that for a while, support them through that, and then have to do another detox. So we do detoxes over time. What, what's been your experience? Have you done these six to nine month detoxes? No, I have not. Generally, I try to get in two a year, but that's why I try to make them substantial because I'm only doing two a year. But I, the way that I nourish myself comes off it's very similar to a more of an intermittent fasting type situation because mm -hmm. I'm not the big bulk eater any longer. My my, I, I'm going mainly for nutrients because mm -hmm. I cannot handle three massive plates of food a day. That's too much bulk for me. Yep. I don't need that. So I maintain the fiber. I make sure I get the fiber. I have no issues in that area anymore and that was my issue um being able to uh you know being uh having poor um 
for uh, just the, just the poor system. Period. I couldn't use the bathroom. My I couldn't digest my food. Just the whole thing was off. And um, I'm like clockwork. Yeah. So yep. very very happy because my life was very miserable uh, before. That's the fun thing about eating a healthy diet, and my diet has evolved in the last, I would say, six to nine months. I'm eating right now almost all raw. Yeah. The only cooked stuff might be some vinegars or things that are not technically raw, but I do some dehydrated foods. But the the regularity in terms of how things move through your system, oh. I find that to be the most it's unbelievable. Exactly, and and you enjoy the food because it goes in and you feel good. It you gives you feel, energy and it moves You feel through. nothing but satisfied after you eat. You feel no exactly. other adverse effects. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And it's uh, <laughs> the toxic flea, flea bite girl. She says, uh, and, the, and her point is is valid because. It, it, it um, helps us with some of the other points I've made. So I tend to lose weight in batches. Most folks lose one, two pounds per week. I go a yeah. week, lose zero, and then the third week, 10 to 12 pounds well, per yeah, month. I've seen people that do that. Yeah, yeah. And it, it underscores the fact that everybody's body responds differently to this. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of factors involved. I mean, yeah, your genetic makeup, of course, but it has to do with what's going on in your body. I mean, yeah. and some people, they may have a lot of swelling, that can be reduced very rapidly. And other people may have a lot of the weight in cell fat cells that may take a while to break down and be released. So it pretty uh, much speaks to your, your specific lifestyle. Yep. And, and your condition. Now freedom is raising an interesting point. Most people have pounds of old dried fecal right. matter that exactly. is stored in the colon, which is toxifying the system and keeping the food from being assimilated. That's true. As uh, I guess they're full of crap, huh? <laughs> yeah, John Wayne, remember 40 pounds? Come yep, on. Yep. Everybody and knows about that. <laughs> no, that's right. I mean, the thing is that it's, and we don't think about that. And people, you know, they'll eat food. And, and you know, I have people come and, you know, I cannot imagine. So you say they, they have a bowel movement once a week or twice a month. It's like, oh my goodness. You know, I've heard of people going a month without having, and it's like I cannot imagine, you know, I've walking had out. Doctors not tell me go go a couple of times a week. That's enough. MD behind that name. Couple of times a week. Oh my couple goodness. Couple of times a week. That should be enough. Until no, I was no. actually trying to dig it out of my own self. That ain't enough. Trust. No, that's it's several um, times a day for me, and I don't sit down to massive plates of food. But it's still several times a day for me. Yep, same here. Multiple times, and I like to get it out very early. Uh, it's too. okay to kickbox and exercise during detox. Uh, early I on, do. you may take it easier because some people are more fatigued, especially your first time. But, but I, always, okay. I always did. I always maintained my thing. I did my thing. It, it never bothered me like that. Gotcha. Fecal matter, how to get rid of it. Well, stop putting in trash in your system and let your bowels move. Uh, you mentioned CKLS, which also helps clean the colon. Uh, yeah, that, oh, can I just mention something else about the sure. CKLS right quick? When sure. I got on the CKLS, I was that person that was coming from poor digestive situation, going to the bathroom maybe once a week, twice a week, maybe at the most. And when I got on CKLS, I actually started taking five CKLS a day. And I took five CKLS a day for years and it's not a laxative. It's just an herbal cleanser. It just keeps these areas. But let me just tell you, I got so regular that now I don't even, maybe every now and then I take CKLS. So so let me ask about CKLS. This is something I need to know because I need to advise. So you mentioned taking five a day for a year. So you for don't- More than a year, doc. After I did that, so after I did that uh, oil cleanse, uh huh. I got on the CKLS because I just wasn't regular. I couldn't go to the bathroom. So did I, it? It didn't create any dependence, huh? None. Never was dependent on it, and and that was what they guaranteed me. They said this is not a laxative. Period. Uh, so basically, it's assist you. It'll keep you kind of regular, but it is not a laxative, and they did not lie to me. As soon wow. as I stopped taking it, I have. I don't even look back now. 
I'm just as regular as I was when I more so because mm. I've learned like you, I, I've I've gotten smarter with the way I nourish myself. I don't even eat as much as I used to. So CKLS, I may I may have my patients take more of that on a regular basis. Yeah, let me tell you um, that colon, kidney, liver, spleen. That that CKLS has been a lifesaver. CKLS by uh, New Body Products, C Fu, C dash F U. That stands for colds and flu. That was another one of his products that was just amazing. If you ever had issues with a cold, I don't know about that other thing they got out now, but anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, interrupted you. I interrupted you. No problem. Shut up, but have you ever done colonics, or hydrotherapy? I had my first colonic a couple of months ago. Oh, wow. How was it? It was great. It was great. Yeah, and yeah. I really need to go back. I need to go back and do a few more back to back to back. Mm -hmm. um, but um, they can tell if you're uh, if you're combining your food properly. They can tell because of how much gas you, you have accumulated in you, what kind of food you're probably getting too much of. And oh, it's incredible with these colonics. Incredible. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I would suggest that for anyone. Yeah, I've used colonics before, too. And I think it's good as an adjunct. Make sure you're not just putting trash in and trying to flush it out because right. you're just spinning your wheels. Um, uh, Zorro's talking about the Duke. You know, there was, um, um, I remember reading where the autopsy of John Wayne, and I need to probably look it up for sure, but they found a lot of fecal material in his colon. Yeah, uh, and of course, that. he was a lot of states. So that uh, that's what uh, Zorro is alluding to. Yeah. Um, now, bloating. I think you probably touched on this. Have you seen people have issues with bloating during detox? We have seen that. Now, in my experience, it's if you're starting a detox and you're putting raw plant foods in and maybe your system is used to a lot of processed, chemicalized foods, your enzymes and things, your GI mucosa is messed up. So your digestive system is not able to digest these plant foods. Mm. So, you know, people have had like, and we see a lot of people with irritable bowel syndrome or some form of that. And we tend to go, that's when you go to your smoothies or cold pressed juices mm. and the food's easy to absorb and let the body rest and heal. There you uh, go. So, so the bloating can be a problem there. I mean, you know, any, your experience on this? No, I, I, I would have to agree with you on that. Yeah. Definitely. The, the and E3 I, Live? I, huh? Go ahead. No, what you use much E3 Live? Yeah, I do use the E3 Live. I do that every day. That That's a, a must-have for me every day. Like I said, that's my goal is nutrition first. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then I think, too, it may have something to do with me being 70. I mean, you know, I just, Ron's the same way. My husband, he's 73 in September, and then we just, neither one of us have a desire for a lot of food. Not, a, not yeah. bulk, you know? Well, well, I think you've gotten your body conditioned over time. I mean, I, I've always been a big eater in the past, and I don't eat nearly what I've eaten before. And uh, largely because it's, you know, your stomach starts to shrink. You do these detox. You're only eating plant foods. That's and true. it fills up. And, and I think the big part is that you're getting biochemically satisfied more regularly and when you have that i think that makes a, a big difference for you you know what else changed in my my world like i i don't use deodorants anymore i don't have to yeah I, no, I agree the, i don't have the stenches like i used to you know what i'm well, saying well Even well you're not a, you're not a walking graveyard anymore i mean that's true it's a, i mean people are human morgues that's true we create all that stench ourselves. That's right. That stench. Yeah. Now, Cynthia Hammond, she did CKLS for three months and lost 37.5 pounds. Plant-based diet. Wow. wow. That's a great testimony. That's really nice to know. Free by girl wants to congratulate you. So, so again, the, the process works. Um, you know, I would like to share with people First and foremost, you got to remove the toxin from your system. That costs nothing. Yeah. Once you start to feel better, then you start to invest in your body, whether it's a CKLS or E3 Live or yeah. maybe a raw gourmet meal that satisfies you, that transitions you to stay plant-based 
whatever it is, you start off with removing the toxins and then you start to invest. I mean, everybody spends some money on some form of food, uh, whatever you would spend at, you know, restaurant X, Y, or Z, eating your barbecue or whatever you're eating, you can spend that on a healthy gourmet plant-based food that's going to satisfy you while you go through this whole process transitioning uh, getting your taste buds changed to where you're not relying on much of any of that stuff. <clears throat> and and if I may, I, I would just like to say, uh, pass go yeah, CKLS allows you to pass gallstones very well. That's right. Anyway, um, I would just like to say it's it's kind of past time for us as a species, number one. Mm -hmm. to really and truly grow up and take responsibility for self first, um, which you'll automatically be taking responsibility for the whole. You cannot separate yourself from this. It is a oneness. Mm -hmm. The intelligence that created all of it created me. And so, yeah. and it did not make a mistake. Everything it put its hands on, everything it touched and created was just in perfect order. It was a perfect design. And everything that every species need is right here on the planet available to us. Um, even after we've made a mess of our, 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 our food supply, if mm -hmm. there's still food here available to us. And I, I just think we need to stop being babies we need to grow up. We need to teach our young. We need to take care of our planet home. I'm sorry. I know I, I just I just don't understand why we whine so much about eating death when we want to continue to live. And to me, life begets life. Death begets death. So think about it. Now that's that's how, a... we, how, how we continue on with so so great a life when all we ingest is death. So anyway, now that's a great point. I mean, the thing is that you know people are running around. <laughs> Cynthia Hammond says, "Amen to that." <laughs> you know, I was riding at the hospital, uh, and uh, <clears throat> a yeast infection like Canada caused bloating. Try cutting your sugar from your diet. Consume more leafy greens. Yep, I think that's a a good. And success. sugar needs to go from everybody's diet. Refined sugar, high fructose corn syrup, all that kind of stuff needs to go. Yeah, we're using agave, but trust me, the effects of agave compared to refined sugar and high fructose corn syrup is like night and day. Yep. Night and day. I yep. ate sugar and my skin was ripped. My back was ripped. I could not. My granddaughter right now, she eats too much sugar. She's going to have zits everywhere. That's saying to me, if it's showing up on the outside, it's doing some nuts on the inside. Miss me. It, it makes you too acidy. Mm -mm. No. Yeah. Now, that was uh, that was uh, that was the case with me. And, you know, I was eating a lot of processed sugars and things like that. And, and certainly, you know, um, less processed sugars are good transitions as you're moving away to just eating sugar in a whole foods component. So, but yeah, those processed sugars are a nightmare. And so people need to stay away from them. And so um, addicting. And, and speaking of sugar, I was, I was in the uh, hospital and uh, rounding. And so um, <laughs> there were some nurses and, and I, I talked to them. I know them, some that I know pretty well. And uh, they, um, and uh, you know, they were standing around the nurse's station and some were eating donuts and, <laughs> <laughs> they have that mask down on their chin. It's, oh, you're not wearing your mask. And, of course, they were eating donuts, not wearing the mask. Of course, you know, someone put some donuts in front of you. That's probably the most effective use of a mask to put it up to keep COVID from getting in. I, I know you won't keep COVID from getting in, but you keep the donuts from getting in. But but anyway, they were eating the donuts. And so I said, well, you know, you're not wearing your mask. Oh, we're vaccinated. And you're holding up the donuts and eating. <laughs> and, of course, I said, well, you know, is that the Krispy Kreme donut reward you got for getting the vaccine? Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so um, uh, <clears throat> uh, last question here. I don't use coconut oil during detoxing. Uh, we tend to stay away from the oils unless you're detoxed with raw seeds and nuts. Uh, some people can do the oils, olive oil that's going to move the, uh, 
if you're doing some specific use of it, the number of people use it early on, but just kind of as a randomly use it, we we haven't, you know, done that in our experience. Uh, yeah, I don't people. either. Yeah, but but the thing is that, uh, <clears throat> so that whole concept of, oh, I got the shot so I can eat a donut. I mean, we're just totally oblivious to what it means to be healthy or not healthy. And, and all this stuff is just pushed in the media and it's sometimes it's painful to have some a little bit of insight. I don't think I know all the answers, but I have a little bit of insight. <clears throat> and I think it's painful to have a little bit of insight to a lot of these things when we see how far off we are as a society, where we think that, yeah. okay, health is just getting a shot and you can eat fried chicken and the donuts and we don't understand that uh, uh, that is a process. Uh, so last question before we sign off, somebody wants to know how to get CKLS. Can you go online, Google it? Oh, sure. Just to look up new body products. Okay, new, new body products. Body and so, products. Right. Yeah, and so I'll uh, I'll put that in there. So anyway, Chef about any final words uh, for our audience tonight as we get you ready know, to close out? Just actually... Um, just hoping that everybody opens their eyes and pays attention to where they are and what's going on um, in, in, on this journey for all of us right now. And when it's, when it's time, when you're called, you know, don't be a baby. Stand up. It's time for you to um, grow up and, and, and do the right thing. And we all understand and know what the right thing is. I don't care. You can kick and scream and act as crazy as you want to act, but we all know what the right thing is. And and we just need to stop being so self-centered, so selfish, and pay attention to the blessings that we have. I, I mean, and 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 especially for us who we we pray and we give thanks. And what are, what are we really giving thanks for? Are we really grateful? Are we really grateful? So I think those questions need to be asked and answered by each and every one of us. Yep, yep, yep. I think that's right. And um, I like the fact that you use the whole concept of being grateful for what you have. Uh, greed is certainly part of this, you know, eating up all the chicken wings you can before you die. And the last comment, Freedom says, I guess you looked this up. John Wayne had 40 John pounds. Wayne Elvis had 60. Speak about it. Elvis had, you know, Elvis, he was, um, I think uh, when he died, he was on the toilet. I think he had a is that a chicken? Uh, no, pork chop or something. Elvis looked like he had sixty plus a pork chop. He looked—he <laughs> looked like that. <laughs> Is that one pork chop that broke uh, broke the camel's back? Uh, and so, um, uh, it's a uh, it's a cute pork chop <laughs> item. Um, so bad. So somebody doesn't complain about the price of juice, but you know the price of food. I mean, back to this whole price thing. Um, I tell people as well, you know, healthy food is expensive. I say, look, wear cheaper shoes, you know? There you go. <laughs> I mean, you you, go. what you put in your mouth should be the biggest I'm investment sick of you have. I'm complaining about that. No, you pay what you want to pay for what you want to pay. And then when you get sick, you want everybody to come to the hospital to see you. Ain't nobody coming to the hospital. We don't want to go in the hospital. Doc got to go to the hospital. We don't yeah. want to go into the hospital. We don't have to go to the Don't make us come to the hospital to see you. Stay well. That's stop right. Ingesting the things that that look. Stop making it all about your palate. <laughs> Share some with the rest of your body. You you get right. so hung up on what it tastes like. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that's true. That's true. Now that's a great. That's a great. That's oh. a great comment. <laughs> well, Shepard, Beth, I look forward to. It. Lord willing, I should be out there this end of this week. Thank you very yes. much. I'll stop right. by stuff I eat, have me a raw gourmet salad, oil free and a raw gourmet dessert ready. There you go. Hey, check it out, Doc. Um, I did a couple of, you know, I've been doing these little recipes here in my apartment um, and I just spread everything out on the dining room table, but I, I posted um, <clears throat> a couple more. You want me to send you the video? It's a, yeah. it's a, it, it's a, it was, a, I did it on Instagram live. Yeah, that's what I did. I did Instagram live. So anyway, but but your folks can go on IG Live Chef a bit and check it out. It's three that you can call them salads. You can call them. They're all Asian inspired. Uh, uh, um, one was a uh, what do you call it? Cauliflower um, uh, uh, rice 
what do you what do you call those rice dishes? Stir fried rice or something? Yeah, it's like that. And then okay. the fried rice. Yeah. Fried rice. Fried rice. But it does have a, a, a grain in it. Um, and then the other one, well, they'll see if they go on there. I don't want to hold you up, but if they go on there, they, they've got all three recipes. And I always say at the end, if you feel like you don't want to eat them cold, you can always put them in a warm skillet and heat them up. That's the one yep. thing about raw. Yep. Or uh, warm it in the oven at 120 oh, degrees. Warm it in the oven at 120 and just hang, let it hang and you're good to go. There you, you right. go. There you go. Thank you very much, Chef Babette. I will you, see baby. you later this week. Have All a good right, evening. Take Thank care. you. Thank you, bye. Right. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that. And of course, if you've got something out of that, uh, please subscribe and uh, press the notification button. And of course, share this with uh, loved ones, friends. Uh, many people need to understand how to detox, how to clean their system out. It's something that we should all do on a regular basis. Shepard Bet, despite her long life of healthy eating, does a detox on a regular basis. It's like taking a shower. You may do it once a month or twice a, a year. <clears throat> but even on a regular basis, uh, week to week, day to day, uh, you may have a prolonged cleansing phase or where you eat, consume, uh, drink cold pressed juices or water. For a prolonged period of time, uh, you may do a 36, 48 hours, 72 hour water fast. I mean, there are a lot of ways of intermittently cleansing in an aggressive way. But the first, you know, extensive juice feast or detox, I should say, probably should be weeks. <clears throat> and then when you're in between detoxes, you have these intermittent phases where you're allowing your body to cleanse. So I hope that was helpful to you. Again, um, Share this with information with loved ones. Uh, you know, I got a call from the the a patient, family member of a patient, you know, who sadly was calling me because her husband was suffering from cardiac arrest, and you know, you know, and we sent out prayers and the like. Uh, I don't like getting these calls. Now we all have a day to die, uh, but what we want to do is we want to optimize our life, optimize the quality of living. And we all want to live, uh, if God allows, into our 90s and 100s and have a peaceful life and die peacefully in our sleep uh, after living a rightful old age, not in a hospital, not in a nursing home, not on lots of medications or with pain and other uh, types of ailments. Uh, we want to uh, let our body transition in a nice, peaceful way. So I hope that was helpful to you. And uh, <clears throat> until next time, I want you to keep it fresh, natural, and live. I will see you next Monday, and y'all take care and be well. Mm -hmm.